Good evening everyone, I'm Mary Joy Patricio, your reporter for tonight. Learning Episode 3, entitled Understanding Action Research, Concepts, Processes, and Models. Intended Learning Outcomes. At the end of this learning episode, I must be able to use concepts and process of action research. Next, identify sample models of action research such as DepEd 2017, McNiff and Whitehead 2006, and Nelson 2014. Fine action research as a form of inquiry that enables practitioners everywhere to investigate and evaluate their work. Rawlinson and Little, 2004, define action research as a systematic inquiry that allows educators to learn about their own instructional practices as they monitor improved student learning. Remember, do not to use action research when you want to draw comparisons, show statistical correlations, or demonstrate a cause and effect relationship. Here are some samples of action research questions. Is there a significant relationship between teacher motivation and teacher retention? This is not reflective of an action research question. Remember, action research should not be used to test relationship. McNiff suggested to rephrase the statement making it more reflective. How do I influence the quality of teachers' experience in school? so that they decide to stay. Let us consider this question. Does management style significantly influence productivity? Prediction also not appropriate for an action research. Recast the statement to make it more suitable for an action research type question. How do I improve management style to encourage productivity? What about this question? Is there a significant difference in the student's extent participation using different seating arrangements? To make it more suitable for an action research type question, it is suggested to rephrase the statement, how do I encourage greater audience participation through trying out different seating arrangements? In this video, learn sample action research questions. This video is about the cycle of action research. Conducting action research always works in this cycle. It's a cycle because you could start at any part or any step. It really just depends on what's happening in the field. Because action research is a combination of research and practitioner work, it could start at any portion here, depending on what the problem is or the research topic is. But it always goes through um, the, the different steps of the cycle, which are reflect, plan, act, and observe. Again, you could start anywhere, but you always have to go through these four steps to complete your action research. Even though action research is really focused on a local problem to solve or answering a local research question, the first step is always to conduct a really thorough literature review. You need to understand the research topic and, and understand what has already been done, what already is known um, from this prior research or from um, articles or information from people within the community or school that is being studied. So always conduct a thorough literature review before you begin your action research process. Um, the context for action research is very important. And so you need to make sure that you are detailing what the context is that the problem or the research question is coming from. Um, what is the context? This is very important, one, in solving or answering the research question, but also if you want to be able to apply it later to something else. You have to understand the context from which it came. Then you can plan it conduct it, examine it, 
and reflect on the results and see what should come next. And this is going through that cycle of action research. You will always have these four steps of action research to plan, action, observe, and reflect. But depending on um, where you start in the cycle, they could come in a different order. But they always come together and you should always go through each of these steps within the cycle of action research to complete your action research. So you have the planning step. We're in this planning step this is where you are constructing that plan of action or the project plan that's based on the problem to be solved, but also keeping in mind the literature review that you've already done. So you have your problem, you create your action um, research research questions, and then you have your action plan. And this will complete that plan step. Then you have action. Action is where you're actually taking the action on the plan. You're beginning to um, work through the plan that was developed. And so you could have exploratory descriptive study or an experimental intervention study. And the difference between them is really in the name, where exploratory descriptive study is where you, the action you are taking is to explore and get a lot of descriptive detail and information from um, the environment that's being studied. So the point of exploratory descriptive study is to take action in getting all of these details so that you can better describe um, the environment that is being studied. Experimental intervention study is where you're really trying to solve a problem, where you are doing an experimental research study to discover an intervention or solution for a particular problem in the environment that is being studied. Once you complete either the exploratory descriptive study or an experimental intervention study, your action step is complete. You then can go on to observe. Observe is an assessment of the actions. So in observe, you are looking at what actions were taken and did they work? But you're not just doing this in a subjective manner. You're collecting qualitative and quantitative data and actually conducting um, a research plan to look to see if things worked and getting data and results. This is the efficacy work. So this is a part that a lot of times gets skipped over when you're just working in the field but you're not actually conducting action research. We don't take the time to be able to assess if the action that we're doing is actually working. We think about it uh, um, subjectively in that we think it's working, it seems to be working, uh, but we're not taking the extra steps um, to be able to actually check it. That's the importance of this observe step. Then you can reflect. So in the reflection step, you are reflecting on the results um, or the implications of the results and what can be done to improve upon the research or what is the next problem or research questions that have come up now from the results that you got. So hopefully you can see how you could start at any one of these steps, just depending on the context um, and the environment that is being studied, but that you would work your way through all of them to complete your action research. This is a good illustration of how the cycle of action research is continuous and keeps going and um, really why action research is about lifetime learning and continuous growth. So you could plan and uh, have an action and then observe and reflect and that could lead to a new problem or a new research question that then you have to plan again and act and observe and reflect. And again, you could find a new problem or a new set of research questions and go on. This also would work as you're scaling up the solutions that you're finding. So if you're finding that something is working um, 
first you're you're testing something with one student so you're looking to see um, if what you're doing is working with this one student so you could have your plan you could act upon it observe and reflect with one student and then apply that to the whole class and then apply that to the whole school and so the action research could build in this manner and usually these cycles of action research are continuously happening they really don't have an end until there are no more problems and there's no more research questions to be answered parts of your action research proposal first context and rationale second action research question third proposed innovation intervention and strategy fourth action research methods which include participants and or other source of data and information, data gathering methods, data analysis, fifth, action research plan and timelines, sixth, cost estimates, seventh, plans for dissemination and utilization, and the last part is references. Unang part is yung konteksto at makatuwirang pagpapaliwanag. So, dito sa part na to, ito yung tinatawag natin sa English na context and rationale. So, dito ay papaliwanag mo. Madali lang gawin. So, ipapaliwanag mo lang yung, yung dahilan kung bakit ka gagawa ng isang action research. So, that's sa Tagalog yon na context, konteksto. So, of course, kung gagawa ka nito, so, kailan may matinding dahilan ka. At meron kang mga validated na mga data na kung saan i- nakadepende doon or nakabase doon ang yung rason kung bakit ka gagawa ng isang action research. So, make sure kapag ka, meron kang mga nabasa na ibang articles sa mga ibang references, so, pwede mo rin siyang magamit at isites mo lang siya kung kanino galing ng maayos para iwas copyright po tayo at or plagiarism. So, i-discuss mo yan dyan. So, ang konteksto, o, I mean, ang part na to, ang part na to ay hindi lang ang kailangan na, na mahaba. Okay? So, I-concise mo lang siya basta naka-briefly discuss dyan, naka-elaborate ng maayos yung dahilan mo kung bakit ka gagawa ng action research o kung bakit yun ang napili mong action research. So, pani pa panigurado kasi pag once na napili mo yun, ay may problema ka. So, may problema talaga yun ang usually nangyayari kung bakit tayo gumagawa ng action research. So, may problema ka. At make sure na ang problema mo na yan ay meron kang pinanggagalingan Okay, so anong ibig ko bang pin ano bang ibig kong sabihin na pinanggagalingan yung mayro kang rason kung bakit ginagawa mo 'yon. So, say for example kung kung ang rason mo ay about sa reading performance ng iyong mga anak or mababa sila sa sa mathematics or kung hindi sila marunong magbasa, so i i, i sulat mo yun din di, i sulat mo rin dito sa part na to kung anong reason, okay, kung anong naging result para Ang tawag doon ay backup data para may backup ka. Okay? So, kagaya dito, so ginamit namin ang fill area result para mapatunayan nga na yun nga ay may problema. So, uulitin ko po ang unang part, ang konteksto at <coughs> ang konteksto at at uh, makatuwirang pag makatuwirang pagpapaliwanag ay hindi hindi kinakailangan na maging mahaba ang iyong pagsasalaysay. Okay, next, ang part to ay ang iyong iminumungkahing inobasyon or intervensyon at strategiya. Ito po yung ating yung proposed interventions niyo po. So, sa parting ito, kailangan ilahad mo dito kung ano ang iyong pinopropose, ano yung minumungkahi na intervention para masolusyonan ang yung problema. So, napaka-systematic po natin pagdating dito kasi kailangan naisip mo na siya ipopropose mo at saka um, kailangan din bina, I mean, kailangan din meron ka ng mga backup na related literature para supportan ang iyong innovation. Ngayon, mas maganda kapag ka original mo yon or original mo na innovations para makita talaga natin how effective ang mangyayari doon sa study mo. Pero pwede naman din um ki uh, pwede naman din parang krinaf mo siya when we say krinaf hindi mo siya totally kinopya okay so mayroon kang nabasang mga ibang researches na feeling mo yung 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 strategy na ginamit doon ay pwede or angkop doon sa magiging problema mo so pwedeng ganon but basta make sure lang na 
i-defend mo dito, isusulat mo dito sa part 2 na to kung ano ang ang pagkakaiba niya doon sa original na kinunan mo and kung kung paano siya makakatulong doon sa pro- problem natin. So yun po ang minimum kahing ob- innovation at strategiya. Next na part ay pupunta na tayo sa mga katanungan ng action research. Ito yung mga action questions. So, kung mapapansin nyo, meron ditong mga descriptive questions. So, ganun dapat ang 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 dating ng action, mga research questions mo. So, may, may descriptive ka dyan, meron kang inferencing or merong hypothetical questions and meron din mga significant questions. Ito yung mga ano bang significant, meron bang mahalagang pagkakaiba. So, may mga proving questions ka dapat dyan. So, ang questions naman ay hindi na nga ngailangan din na madami. 3 to 5 is enough na yun. Basta maidi-discuss mo lang ng maayos ang iyong action research. Next. Yung mga metodo ng action research, ito yung mga methodology. So, kailangan ma-discuss mo din dyan kung sino ang mga kalahok ng pag-aaral mo or action research. Okay, tas yung mga iba pang paraan na gagamitin mo, kagaya ng, ng pag-gather ng data mo, kagaya ng mga statistical tool na gagamitin mo. And next that is yung plano sa pag-aanalisa ng data. Paano mo i-analyze yung result ng, ng, ng mga, mga data na inano mo, na ginather mo, paano may, anong gagamitin mo, anong statistics ang gagamitin mo para ma-prove na meron talagang merong effect yung strategy na ginamit mo para doon sa study mo. So, dito mo yung isusulat sa pagpaplano sa pag-aanilisa ng datos. Next is yung isyong ethical. So, itong isyong ethical is napaka-importante ito kapag ikaw ay gagawa ng action research. Dahil dito, papaliwanag mo na ang ang magiging scenario kapag ikaw ay mag-conduct ng research. Kabilang na dito yung pagpapaalam mo sa parent or guardian na gagamitin mga bata sa mga pag-aaral. Kasi po, sa sa panahon ngayon, napaka-importante na magkaroon ka ng waivers, lalo na kung may involve na mga estudyante mo o mga bata, para iwas ka din dun sa, sa isyong ganun. Okay? So, ipaliwanag mo lang sa mga magulang na 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 i nagwi-wave sila na pinapayagan kanila na na mag-undergo yung bata ni, ng mga anak nila doon sa gagawin ng pag-aaral. So waiver or consent po ang tawag saan. So dito yan sa isyong ethical kung anong gagawin mo pa kay sa nakasulat diyan. At kailangan may paliwanag mo din diyan na free lang yon. So big sabihin ay walang bayad, hindi ka magbabayad sa kanila. Yes, of course, kailangan yon. Next is yung Privacy Act. So Uh, Privacy Data Act, ibig sabihin, um, kailangan may paliwanag mo rin doon sa mga participants na yung kanilang mga sagot or kanilang mga personal data such as yung kanilang mga pangalan ay mananatiling private. Okay? So, hindi mo idadivulge yung yung mga information na magagather mo sa kanila. So, pa, basically, plain lang yun para sa pag-aaral. Okay? Next is yung plano at timeline ng action research. So, dapat nakaplano din kung kailan mo siya gagawin, kailan ka mag-start, anong gagawin. Lahat ng gagawin mo sa pagdating sa action research ay nakaplano. So, in this manner, ang ginawa namin is yung tinatawag na grant. Okay? Yung grant table. So, pinakita dito, kunyari, month of February, March, and April, yun yung paggawa mo ng research. So, kunyari, selecting of participants, pag nag-select ka ng participants, so, week 1 ng February, ganon. So, orientation of the participants will be week 2 and 3. So, ang tawag po sa kanya ay grant table. Okay? Next is yung cost estimate. Ito yung pag-estima ng mga gagastusin mo sa sa paggawa mo ng action. I mean sa pag yes, paggawa mo ng action research. So kasama din yung man paper, folders, ink, communication expenses or travel expenses. Tapos isa mo lang sa lahat. Okay? Next is yung pagpapa pagplano sa pagpapalaganap at paggamit sa resulta ng pananaliksik. So ito yung dissemination and Dissemination of results. Paano mo siya i-disseminate? So, pwede sa faculty meeting, pwede sa lack session, pwede sa mga magulang meeting, kaya or any kind of conferences kung kaya mong i-present. So, pwede yun doon. So, dito may susulat yun kung anong plano mo. Okay? At ang dulo naman ay yung mga reference. So, yung mga pinagkunan mo ng mga information. So, dyan mo sila susulat. Napakahalaga na 
na, naka-arrange siya ng alphabetical order. So, yun lamang po. 